Hi everybody, welcome to the studio. Today we will be looking at this painting here. I haven't really recorded how it got to be here, but I will quickly explain to you. Um, when I was working on that landscape over there, uh, no, no, actually when I was working on this landscape over here, um, I had to make some really narrow strokes so I had this little um, canvas as a tryout uh, canvas. And so it was filled with all kinds of random tryouts. Then of course, once I had that, uh, I thought, oh, well, this would be nice here, that would be nice there. And I ended up with a really sort of bland, not so interesting painting. <laughs> big red brush and started, you know, accentuating all kinds of things in red. Uh, then I thought it was too red, so I added some other colors, the green, the yellow, the purple. Uh, and then I thought, well, it might be interesting to draw on it with a pen, which I did. So you can see all kinds of little minimal abstract drawings or marks, if you like on this. So I thought I'd give it my usual uh, stencil treatment. And normally I cut these out very precisely. Usually I sketch them first and cut them out and glue them on. But this time I thought, no, let me try like I did, I think with some other painting as well, uh, about uh, an angel arrives. These companies who sell me books and stuff online and they usually come into a carton, really sort of rough carton packages, which I like to use for stencils. So this, you know, I can very easily, you know, modify this by tearing, tearing uh, parts off. So I already looked at it and I thought this would be nice to go here roughly. But the nice thing about stencils is, of course, I can always change it again later. Then I has, have this one from, I think it's from another painting. I, at least I, I can see I already, um, you know, rolled on it before. Uh, this is a bear, believe it or not. And I thought I would put this here. Now, with these big stencils and this little canvas, of course, there's not that much space. So I also had this one, but I wasn't quite sure, you know, put it here, it will distract from the bear, put it here, put it here, it will be too much, you know, in the same plane. So in the end, I decided do it something like here just you know just far enough off so it doesn't disturb the composition here okay and i fished another little piece of cardboard out of the um, trash box this morning and i thought oh well maybe this would be nice to have to use as a little horizon it's going to be a very low horizon but now that I look at it, maybe this could even be higher here. Okay, so let's say this is the composition. Um, I'm going to sit down in my chair for a while and look at it and see if I like it enough. Then what I will do, and I will show that to you, glue on the stencils and roll over with this here nice fresh full pot of gesso I got this morning. Uh, that's really so nice to have a good pot, pot of gesso in your studio. So that's the plan. On to the next phase. So here I am on my knees on the floor because I don't I don't want these, the white paint to creep under the stencils too much. Well, this is wide enough. 
sometimes when uh, the gesso is too thick or especially in cases where I have used uh, white paint rather than gesso it was covering up the background too much and I don't like that as soon as it becomes predictable usually it's not as interesting it will dry up a little lighter than it is and here I have a little extra project uh, this is almost like a sideline of a sideline so I removed the stencils and then I found what I often find actually that it was all a bit too bland you know from a design perspective it could have been a good you know wrapping paper or wallpaper or whatever but as expressionist art it was too bland so I added these uh, shapes here but these shapes I fill them in pretty you know tightly and pretty I fill them in pretty tightly sort of clash in style with the with the stencils so now I'm going putting it back on roughly see if that's better I won't be as careful as I was before because the stencils are not that careful either it's sort of fun to put it on quite roughly because it's a lot easier uh, I don't know Let's see how this comes out I thought this paint, painting also needed some lighter patches well, it certainly has a speed of expressive arts so where am I with this painting now um, I started rubbing on it a lot actually my treatment was extremely primitive having a wet cloth and rubbing and rubbing and rubbing I actually rubbed out a whole sort of little moon over here but you can see it in other places also a lot of the acrylics are gone I, there was a big blue area here that I didn't really like so I rubbed it out so where I am now um, the whole brushwork is really loose here so that's my biggest challenge is really to keep that as loose because I tend to you know if you look at this one for instance or some other other of my works you see it's uh, I can be really tight with my brushwork and here everything is loose and I think if I combine it with more tighter elements like I had here it doesn't work so uh, that's one thing I think these all being the same colors are, are okay but then this one also being the same color that's sort of I don't know what to say boring or you know strange you know suspect that all the animals or all the creatures here are the same color um, so I'm gonna make this one a different color then I was thinking thinking of the famous uh, Max Beckman's advice a uh, great expressionist painter from the uh, 20s 30s 40s especially of the last century uh, to put something in front uh, I, I know everything's flat here in this painting but uh, I think there should be something in front so I made this little this little sort of sketch when I was doing other work and uh, so I'm gonna put a tree here change this color put a tree here do something with the eyes of course uh, and then maybe a little more detail here maybe even a little clouds here and then I think we've I hope we are more or less finished with this it's probably gonna be a long movie about a <laughs> really small painting I have a title uh, because I think this is like a moon and there's gonna be a tree here and this is Dutch uh, Santa Claus St. Nicholas uh, song 
uh, called uh, Makker staakt u wild geraas. Makker staakt u wild geraas. Heerlijk avondjes gekomen, avondje van Sinterklaas. Oh, that and Makker staakt u wild geraas is uh, Comrades and your wild moaning. I thought that was a very beautiful title. So, of this whole painting, I think the title is by now the best. Here I am with a big brush on a small painting. 